questions. So next talk is on uh, MITL, a compositional translation from MITL to time datometer. And the talk will be given by Shi Ming Ho. Okay, thank you for the introduction. So uh, here are some pictures I collected uh, about system errors. So you see uh, software faults are uh, everywhere. So uh, this picture I took it on the bus, this in grocery store, and this in an electronic store. So uh, there are some uh, errors induced by humans, such as if the pilot passes out in an F-16 uh, aircraft, uh, it's a more severe problem. So uh, there are also less severe problems uh, this, like these errors. And today I'll focus on the verification of time systems based on automaton logic which is uh, more like a verification at the, the design phase. So suppose we want to model this lift as a mathematical object. We will first do some mental abstraction of this system. And you can see the system as having a number of events, such as uh, move up, move down, and open or close the door. And the system will also have some uh, internal states, such as uh, the lift at, at which store, or which floor uh, the door is open or closed. And also, we have some timing constraints, such as the operation time of this lift and the mechanical delays of this thing. And we arrive at this, which, which is uh, what we usually call a time automaton. The model was uh, originally proposed by Learn Deal in the early, early 90s. So before we go on, it's important to be aware that there are two semantics of time automata in the literature. The first one is called the pointwise semantics, which is based on time words, uh, which are just sequences of events followed uh, along with their timestamps. And the other semantics called continuous semantics, in which a behavior is a signal uh, that is a function from the negative reals to uh, the labels of states. So if you see this behavior in the continuous view, you will see a function like this. And in this talk, however, I will focus, focus on the first one, the pointwise view. So I'll focus on a semantic space on time words. So this is a metric temporal logic proposed by Coimans in 1990. So this is just extension of LTL with these intervals, I here. So you can put an interval on your temporal operators in LTL. So its semantics and the pointwise semantics can be understood as this. So if you specify an interval on your temporal operator, then uh, in addition to the usual LTL meaning of until, this phi1 holds continuously until phi2 holds, then you you're also require that the current point and your witness point is separated by distance t, by time t, and that t belongs to your specified interval i. So if you have a property like this, there will be a move up event in the future, and it will be followed by an arrive event after exactly five time units. You can write it in the MTL formula like this, F5 to 5 arrive. So the good thing about time automata is that uh, their emptiness problem is decidable, and indeed in P-space, P-space complete. But uh, there are also some bad news. The bad news is that uh, they are not close on their complementation, and in fact, their universality problem and language inclusion problems are undecidable. And for logics, we also have a problem because it's the satisfiability problem for MTL and model checking time autom automata against MTL specifications is also undecidable. So naturally, we'll be interested in looking uh, to uh, fully decidable subclass of time automata and metric temporal logic. So we arrive at a metric interval temporal logic, which is called MI MITL. Uh, this, is what's, this was proposed by Lord Federer and Hansinger uh, in the early 90s again. So the crucial obs observation here is that in the real world, there is no in infinite precision. So instead of writing F5 to 5 here, you may as well write something like f4 to 6 as an approximation. Uh, you may think this is not good enough because uh, this is really imprecise. But with proper scaling, you can probably write something like 4.999 to 50111. 
001, which is good enough in practice. So uh, this indeed makes a big difference uh, at least in theoretical terms. So uh, now it can be, uh, MITL formulas can be translated into time automata. And indeed, the satisfiability problem and model checking problems becomes decidable. Uh, and in X space, com and they are indeed X space complete. And we, if you add projection to MITL, you get the full class of time automata, which is great because uh, this, uh, this is analogous to the case of LTL. If you add projection to LTL, you get bookie automata. So, uh, uh, so this is very nice. But uh, so now we can have a look at what can be done in practice. So this tool, UPA, was first started in 1995 by people at Uppsala and Albert universities. So it can do model checking of network of time automata. So you can model your system in components. And it can model check this uh, against a fragment uh, of formulas in a fragment of TCTL, which is the time version of the branching time logic CTL. So indeed, it only supports a rather restricted fragment of TCTL. But still, at least uh, the reachability is supported. So we can check uh, time automata reachability. And these days, uh, UPA is the most popular tool for analysis of time automata. You can see these uh, citation numbers are pretty high. And so you, you may think uh, we must now have some tool for MITL-based verification. Uh, but this is not the case, uh, even after more than 20 years. So there are a, a number of difficulties in this. The first one might be due to UPA itself. Since it is very successful, so uh, there is really very little incentive for other people to work on some different tools about verification of time automata. So you may think, well, then just write some tools to work with together with UPA. And there are also difficulties in this approach. It's because the original MITL to time automata construction proposed in the original paper is uh, really complex and it is monolithic which means it's not compositional. For, uh, for MITL formulas, it's very important for this construction into time automata to be compositional, because otherwise, the resulting automaton will be really large in feasible in practice. And indeed, there are simplified compositional constructions in the literature, but uh, there are some a incompatibility <laughs> problems, because they are based on less common models, which doesn't seem to be easily uh, combined with UPA. And indeed, this UPA tool is based on essentially the point-wise semantics based on time words. And these constructions are all based on uh, continuous semantics, which are different. So we also have this uh, semantics inconsistency problem. So to be fair, uh, if you consider simpler fragments of MIT, uh, then it might be possible, but at, at least for me, I find it difficult to modify the, the current approach uh, to incorporate time. And at some point, people even started to use SMT solvers to solve this uh, MITL satisfiability or model checking problems. But we, as we know, this, is, this approach as based on SMT solvers is inherently incomplete, and uh, performance can also be a problem. So if we lo look closely, then this classical result is only stated and proved in the continuous semantics case. Uh, the case for pointwise semantics is uh, largely a folklore. People believe it, it, it is true, but it's never been proved. And it, it's only proved in our previous work published in 2014. So this work improves upon our previous work uh, by being compositional. And it uses less state because we subsume the idea of Gaston and Oduk's uh, CAF 2001 paper on LTL. And we use less clocks. The number of clocks uh, is the decisive factor uh, of uh, time automata verification performance. And we, the number of clocks uh, compared to our previous paper can be reduced by at most a factor of two. And more importantly, it works well with UPA. So if we look at this uh, case of LTL, you have an LTL formula. You can translate it into an alternating automata like this. 
then the run of this alternative automata will be a tree like this. Now, suppose you want to translate this alternative automaton into a non-deterministic bookie automaton. You just do this consider a, f a configuration like a level here together. And in this case, you can just merge this or lump this together because they, they are indeed the same. This is subset construction. Uh, for the infinite case, we need this Miyano Hayashi construction to make this work uh, with a 3 to the n blow up in a number of locations. And now the observation by Gaston and Odux in 2001 for LTL is that uh, the alternative automata resulting from LTL formulas are uh, of a very special uh, kind, and they have an inherent parent, uh, partial order on the state. So we can instead use a simplified construction, which gives a much smaller blow up here in the state space. And there too, called LTL to be a, is still in wide use today. So it, uh, in a sense, it's still the state of the art. So the idea of this work is to uh, construct one component auto auto automaton for each location of the alternative automata. This means that for each timed subformula, we construct a small component automaton. So the idea is like this. Suppose you have three locations in your S1, S2, S3 in your alternative automaton, and you are looking at a configuration consisting S1 and S3 then it can be represented by this configuration of your components. So in this one, the token is at here. In this one, the token is here, at here. And this placement of tokens in your components corresponds, of course, corresponds to a location in your product automaton of these components. So the technical difficulty now is how to synchronize these components. We do this by introducing a fresh proposition R, which we call a trigger for each component. That means that we introduce a, a trigger for each time subformula. Now, for example, this com uh, consider a component for this until formula phi 1 until phi 2. We will have this component look like this with two states. Now, if the trigger is never triggered, it's never set to true, then we can stay here. If it's set to true, but phi 2 is also hold, then we can still adhere, we can still stay here, because the, this obligation will immediately be satisfied by phi 2. Now, if you, we move to here, then we have to wait until at some point in the future, then phi 2 holds. And along the way, phi 1 must also hold. So, in this way, we can show that uh, the, c the correctness is that if, if a time word is accepted by this component, then it must satisfy this formula. So for the whole LTL formula, we can c construct this component and just do the product construction. And then with a projection, to project away these newly added propositions, we arrive at the equivalent Bouquet automata. So for time formula in MITL, we can translate them into Okata, one clock alternating time automata. And also we have this tree structure. In this case, it doesn't seem obvious how to merge these locations because they all now all carry a clock value. But in this case, we can simply keep this one because uh, this interval here is downward closed. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, in, in, it's unbounded in one direction. So we can only keep this one because this one will imply all the others. So indeed, for the fragment of MITL, in which all the intervals are of this form, uh, unbounded one in one direction, the construction is not very difficult. And we can state that if there are n times of formulas in your whole, form, whole MITL formula, then we can construct a time automaton that uses only n clocks. Now, for the general case where uh, these intervals can be something like 1 to 2 or 3 to 5, it will be a little bit more complicated because we will have to consider uh, how to merge this. But basically, the idea remains the same. We uh, if, if your A's are here, uh, they can use the same witness B here as long as they are in this interval. 
So with a finer case analysis, we can do this, and this will induce an exponential blow up uh, inevitable, but uh, this can be done. So we have implemented our tool in, the t in, uh, in a tool called MyTL, uh, which is available at this address. Uh, and uh, it, it, you can run it online. So if you look at the website, you will see an interface like this. You can simply write your MITL formula here, and then press this button, proceed. And you can check whether your formula is parsed correctly. And then you can simply press this button or this button to check the sat satisfiability of your formula over finite time words or over infinite time words. So we have tried some parameterized formulas. So the conclusion is that uh, the tool works uh, 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 about OK performance for moderately sized formulas. We also compare this tool with SMT-based approach. And it turned out that our approach is uh, about an order of magnitude faster. So the conclusion. So the contribution of this work is a compositional translation for MITL to time automata. And we have implemented this tool called MITL, which works directly with UPAL and, the, the tool, and all other tools that support UPAL input format. So we believe this is, uh, apart from SMT-based approach, which we know are incomplete, this is the first tool for MITL-based verification. So the future direction, including to add nat native su support for ECL, which is another fragment of MITL, which allows some different style of specification to include support for past modalities or counting modalities. And also, we would like to investigate whether this anti-chain-based um, optimizations for LTL can also be applied to the case of MITL. Uh, thank you for your attention. Questions? So uh, I would like to ask, how do you deal with liveness uh, in Opal? And uh, especially, I guess, since your uh, approach is compositional, that you end up with generalized bookie conditions. Yes. So yes, we end up with a generalized bookie condition. But in our tool chain, uh, this is handled by, uh, because we use a, the model checker LTS min as the back end. And that tool itself supports LTL formula as specification, so we can encode, directly encode this generalized bookie condition into that LTL formula, so we're good. So, so if uh, I understand you're not using the UPAL uh, engine, you're using it for modeling, but you use another backend uh, to, to uh, do the actual model checking, right? Uh, yes, indeed, uh, okay. because uh, currently UPAL does not support infinite yeah. word yes. uh, bookie condition. Okay, thanks. Thanks very much. There are no other questions. Let's thank the speaker again. <laughs>